Hello there, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Games Monster Podcast. My name is David Pistansky, and as usual, this is the Games Monster Podcast, part of the Extreme Improv Podcast Network. So make sure you hit the like and subscribe, and check out all of our podcasts and videos on our podcast um, network that includes uh, things from Extreme Improv's Facebook page and Extreme Improv's YouTube channel. We have the Superkick Mania Pro Wrestling podcast, the Mega Movie podcast, the Extreme Improv podcast, Radio Rumble, and much, much more. But now that brief introduction is over, let's get straight on to the big gaming news, which is that E3, the Electronic Video Games Expo thingy, I forget what it stands for, E3, Electronic Entertainment Expo, there you go, uh, has been cancelled this year because of the coronavirus. Yes, the T-Virus, the evil Umbrella Corporation, have actually succeeded, and now now the video game industry is affected. And That's a bit gutting, but we're going to talk a lot about like why this has happened, what it's going to mean for the future, what it's going to mean for the future of the E3 event what it's going to mean for revealing of new games this year, how it will affect things or won't affect things, and so on and so forth. But to begin with, let's I'm actually going to read to you some of the uh, press conference. This is something I've been doing on some of the podcasts recently, if there's something topical in the news. I will give credit uh, where credit's due. So there's a press release gone out from the Electronic Software Association. It's a statement... Uh, and I'm getting this from the Nintendo Life website, but I'll just briefly read it to you. It says, After uh, careful consultation with our member companies regarding the health and safety of everyone in our industry, our fans, our employees, our exhibitors, and our long-time E3 partners, we have made the difficult decision to cancel E3 2020, scheduled for June 9th to 11th in Los Angeles. Following increased and overwhelming concerns about the COVID-19 virus, we felt this was the best way to proceed. <coughs> during such an unprecedented global situation. We are very disappointed that we are unable to hold this event for our fans and supporters, but we know it's the right decision uh, based on the information we have today. Our team will be reaching out directly to exhibitors and attendees with information about providing full refunds. We are also exploring options with our members to coordinate an online experience to showcase industry announcements and news in June 2020. So... Let's let's break down a few thoughts. First thought I'll uh, break down there is that when I coughed in the middle, uh, you cannot catch the coronavirus over over podcasts, so do not worry. But it's it's a it's a crazy situation, isn't it? Uh, the video game industry has been affected. Um, as you'll probably know, I do the Super Kick Mania Pro Wrestling podcast, and there's lots of rumours that WrestleMania may be cancelled. It's interesting they speak about that because obviously that's going to have a like 100,000 people there, and E3 would have 100,000 people, but regular weekly pro wrestling shows and other sports events are still going ahead. I know some sporting um, matchups, NFL games, XFL games, probably some football in this country, will end up playing in empty arenas just so that the match still happens. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an interesting period of history where people look back and see that... There was a period where everything was shut down. Uh, from from my perspective, with the extreme improv comedy show, it's something that's currently uh, being looked into, monitored carefully, and, and debated whether or not uh, everything's going to go ahead this year. We've certainly put plans on uh, that we have had for things that we haven't announced yet currently on hold whilst we're just looking to see what's going to happen. But fortunately, we do a lot of podcasts, so let's get back to E3. So, what what is how bad is this for for video games and the video game industry? Um, it's probably not going to affect things too much, and the main reason why is because about five years ago, uh, now Nintendo did a Nintendo Direct video at E3. They didn't have a stage presentation; they just had a video. Now, if memory serves, they may have had it so you could play some games there, or some things were being shown, but there was not a big press conference. Instead, they just had a 30, 45 minute hour long Nintendo Direct. And I know there's like the state of play videos and other things from other companies, you know, Microsoft uh, and PlayStation, and then just other big publishers have uh, basically 
done their equivalent of Nintendo Directs. And that's probably what's going to happen across the entire industry. It says here, it says we are also exploring options with our members to coordinate an online experience to showcase industry announcements and news in June 2020. So what it means is that the news and announcements will still happen exactly as they were going to be planned to. It's just that you won't have a big crowd watching it, and it'll probably mean that uh, they won't be live announcements, so they'll be able to be pre-recorded like Nintendo Directs, and they'll probably be better for it. And this will probably mean that after this year, everyone's going to go, huh, what did we need a big industry trade show of this magnitude for? When what we're showing are video games, the key word there being video. And now there's the internet, you don't need to gather journalists all into one room, everyone can watch it at the same time, get the exact same experience, whether they're journalist or not. Excuse me. And and then this might be the actual end of E3. Now it's interesting when they speak about the end of E3, just as I spoke about WrestleMania perhaps being cancelled when weekly shows aren't, is that I went to EGX last year and there are other trade shows um, throughout you know the world which are big ones that happen in Germany and and other places and in France and Europe and all, and all these other places others in America PAX and all these kind of things that go on and why should E3 get cancelled and not them so if they're still going to go ahead when they normally go ahead, then there's no reason why E3 couldn't still go ahead. I think E3 has just become a little bit like the Oscars, where it's like the big event of the year and you could actually just have a much smaller scale event, which isn't as expensive to run, but technically still has all the exact same stuff there. Because when you think about like a booth, if they charge an absolute fortune to Sony and then Sony don't want to do it anymore and they can save money... It just tells you that, well, do you need to charge that much? Do you need to make this as elaborate? You're charging more and making it elaborate because it seems like the big event, but if everyone just said no, if you want it to survive, then you'd just have to charge less, and then it would still happen. be the exact same event, it's just the event organisers wouldn't be you know, taking as much from the, from the people that they need to make it run, which are the console makers, the video game publishers and developers and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's it's a it's a strange time and when you consider that um E3 has run every single year I, si- I think since 1995. It's it's a unusual it's going to you know it is the thing within a year that I look forward to most to see what the new games are, to see what the announcements are. Um, We've been waiting for a new Nintendo Direct for months, and there's been rumours there was meant to be one perhaps this week, some leaked information came out and then it just didn't happen, and I bet that was probably in response to the coronavirus itself, they're waiting to see if that E3 was going to get cancelled, and if it got cancelled they were like, okay, well let's regroup and figure out if we're going to be dropping announcements into this Nintendo Direct, which we can actually hold back for whatever this thing is in June, this coordinated event. I mean, it might just be that the Nintendo Direct is broadcast on the E3 YouTube channel, the E3 website or something like this, however they want to do it. But why they wouldn't just... Like, the E3, if they're going to do a website, to be honest, they could just say, okay, so this is when you can find everyone's individual... Uh, press conferences and you can go watch them at their thing and we'll do some live reactions or some uh, Skype interviews as things may have to be now but uh, but there you have it um, there's there's not really too much more to say that it, it's, it's cancelled that's now it might be a case in one month's time they're like oh my god we didn't need to cancel this this all died down really quickly but um it's still cancelled because they could probably resurrect it and find a way of making it happen in July or August. I know that these things can happen even though it's such a huge amount of moving pieces. It's not just, well, we'll get it. Like, again, I'll go back to the WWE thing. Check out the Super Kick Mania Pro Wrestling podcast, but I'll go back to the WWE thing. A few years ago, there was a situation where uh, an arena that was booked for a 
Monday Night Raw um, got double booked because the people that normally run the arena, the sports team that was there, did better than what they normally do and then they needed the arena themselves. And so on short notice, the event had to be moved to another arena. But the difference with that and E3 is even though different fans would have to turn up, because I don't think it was in the same city necessarily, the same state, uh, different fans could suddenly think, oh, there's going to be a show this Monday on two days' notice. Yeah, let's let's pour in and let's get some cheap tickets because they probably sold them cheaper just to make sure they had an audience. But all of the wrestlers, all of the crew, all the camera people, they were WWE um, employees, so they were going to be linked up to the WWE no matter what. When it comes to E3, if they suddenly say, okay, so we can't do it June 9th, June 10th, June 11th, so we're going to do it July 15th, and suddenly Sony might be like, ooh, okay, we can we can do that, and Microsoft will be like, yeah, okay, we can, we can do that, and so would Nintendo. But then say you've got the smaller um, video game developers, it's like, wow, suddenly we need to make plans to go to Los Angeles in in July or August, whenever they've rescheduled it to. It might not be feasible, it might not be logical for them, and just, you know, financially, they might be like, well, we've got other things that are, commi- are committed financially at this time, we've got other things that where we need to be attending things, and now we're going to be cancelling them, and the games that we were going to be promoting in June... You know, they're, some of them are going to be out in the end of June, out in early July. There's not really much point. Also, we need to have revealed and showed them in June just so there's enough hype before September, say. And so what's the point of now travelling over to Los Angeles a month uh, later? So like I say, there's a lot of moving pieces. Because if you've got um, indie developers, smaller developers, smaller publishers, they can't just change their schedule like this they're not going to delay games they need to release games and um with the internet nowadays everyone can put out a trailer everyone can uh go to social media and twitter and everything to publicize things and it might just be a huge setback if the money situation of delaying something an announcement or showing off things or just the idea that well actually now all the members of the press aren't going to be able to preview these games because they're not going to be able to play them and have like Uh, footage off screen and um, so on and so forth so it just may not be logical anymore so what do you guys think do do you think that um, E3 will come back next year do you think that E3 is done and dusted that it's it's all over for for the E3 event how do you think it's going to affect you know it sounds like there's going to be a coordinated event and the different video game developers and publishers are still going to make their big announcements in June. But do you think any will think, screw it, I'm going to announce stuff this week, because if we're not doing an event in June, I can get ahead of everyone else. We may see a huge race to get announcements out quicker than everyone else. Hmm. It may also be that they think, well, actually, because everyone's going to be watching trailers for this or that, I'm going to wait and put things out later. Games might get delayed. And if things like everyone's rushing to get things ready for E3, if there's like, well, we don't need to do that now. Things that would normally get shown at E3 may not now be delayed. People won't give the same feedback about, oh, that looks rough, that looks like a fake trailer, uh, that looks amazing, it needs a little bit more time, and, and there won't be the feedback, and it can actually affect the final games that come out. Very, very interesting time. But anyway, look, we're not going to spend ages and ages on this topic. This was just a mini breaking news podcast about the news that the coronavirus is affecting things. The other thing that's worth mentioning on it is that games are released digitally for the most part now. I went into shops today and everywhere is selling out of pasta. And I know that sounds a bit unrelated, but I was thinking, well, what was if... like, And I know that movies are not getting released because, or they're getting delayed, because people are going to all be sat in the cinema together. But when will it be that, well, actually, we're not going to ship this video game? (coughs) My thought is, well, they can just put things as downloads. 
they could put movies out as downloads too. You could just watch them on Netflix or something. But video games in particular, you could still just download the game. So I think I think everything's going to be okay from the video game industry point of view. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna monitor this situation and just see how things play out and how much everything is affected because. I, for one, like with what I do with Extreme Improv Comedy Show, am monitoring this situation. And there's loads of people that are like scaremongering and jumping to conclusions and overreacting. But imagine if you didn't overreact and you underreacted. Imagine if they said, no, let's have E3 go ahead. We're going to get thousands upon thousands of video game journalists and members of the public and developers and publishers all together. And imagine if it got a lot worse. And then, because people are coming from all over the world, they then go back to all over the world. People go back to Japan, you know, from Nintendo and Sony, and they take the coronavirus there. People go back to all 50 states of America and take it and spread it there, because they've all gathered at E3. So I I think, even though some people are saying this is an overreaction, I'd much rather people overreacted than underreacted. Because it's a bit like Resident Evil, isn't it? If you read the title of t- of today's episode, you'll see that I jokingly said that E3 was cancelled because of the T virus. And this this is genuinely how how things can begin. We don't know enough about this. We don't know how to stop this virus, and that's a lot like Resident Evil. Now, Resident Evil Three is coming out very very soon, and I'm super excited to play that. Hopefully um, it won't get delayed. Hopefully they won't say, oh no, there's a virus out and we've got a video game about a virus and we're going to postpone or cancel or whatever indefinitely delay this thing. Uh, so when Resident Evil 3 comes out, I will play it day one and I will give you some thoughts straight away. So anyway, this was a very mini, mini episode of the Games Monster podcast. I'm going to wrap it up there. So make sure you hit the subscribe, like, share... Follow us on Facebook at Extreme Improv and on Twitter, either at Extreme Improv or Games Monster. Just look up the Games Monster podcast. And until next time, my name is David Stansky. The website is www.extremeimprov.co.uk. Bye for now.